Hello, Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker, and today we're going to talk to you about how you actually deploy satellites from a rocket when they're launched. Now, this actually varies pretty considerably depending on exactly what you're doing. If you only have a single satellite, it's pretty straightforward. The rocket will go off. There is a ring that is at the base of every rocket. There's a pretty standard design called a... Um, I want to say an ESPA ring, something like that. That doesn't sound quite right, but there's a standard design of a plate. You have actually 60 screws that are in a circle that the spacecraft are bolted onto, and you'll have some kind of an explosive bolt that will usually fire to separate out this, and the spacecraft will float away. The spacecraft is connected to the rocket, usually through some kind of an umbilical, that they're held together in such a way that as long as they're still physically touching because the connector is touching they'll stay together but it will pull away without the kind of jerk that you feel it's kind of similar to a, um, a phone charger like i have over here in this corner that you can't actually see they're a very very weak connector and the satellite is pushed down usually you'll have a couple of pusher plates that will push it forward there's a couple of standards effectively they're springs that are set to standardize pushing at a certain velocity when they push up it actually doesn't matter what the size is of the uh, payload the mass these springs work quite magic there are a couple of different standards you'll have usually like one meter per second a meter and a half and two meters per second and if you're deploying satellites you may deploy some of the early ones a little bit faster some of the later ones a little bit slower so that way you don't have the later satellites hit the earlier satellites and so by doing all of these different things they'll be able to deploy the satellites now Starlink is a huge exception Starlink does crazy things where they'll take and rotate the satellite end over end to send it out and uh, really capture the the change of the speed pretty considerably there deploy all the satellites all at once which is just very very insane and to understand this let's talk about a more typical example something like the orbcom or the iridium set where you have a whole bunch of satellites of the same design that are relatively small how would you launch something like those well, those have a ESPRA ring configuration where they'll usually have four or five plates on a ring that's four meters or so wide. At the bottom of these, they'll stack together. They'll actually, I said four meters wide, they're actually the same diameter as the standard adapter, which is something like a meter wide. I can't remember off the top of my head. And they'll bolt together. And so you bolt it to that and you can also stack these on top of each other. Uh, the standard configuration for a spacecraft may be a little bit less if it doesn't weigh as much. The, you need all 60 bolts if you have a ginormous, very heavy satellite. But if you have something that's a little bit less so, then you may be able to insulate it a little bit. If you have satellites that need to have some kind of a dampening protection, you may actually put some kind of a shock absorbing type of material, maybe like a rubber seal or something like that, that can help take some of the shock of the rocket shaking around and doing all kinds of stuff at the bottom. Then each one of these satellites will be positioned on the ESPA ring, which they, they have a kind of standard there. In fact, they'll even put some payloads into some of these. Some of the companies out there are doing this kind of stuff, which is a pretty cool concept. Um, the standard design, though, is you'll have the electrical connectors that will go to the satellite, just as if it's a single satellite that's connected. They'll go to each individual satellite, and the satellite usually will have you know a command to deploy or come from the, the rocket. Once that happens, then the spacecraft will fire the actuators, fire what it needs to do, and separate off. They try to minimize the number of connection points, especially with like SpaceX, because SpaceX doesn't want to leave explosive bolts in space, and that's an extra little danger that you have to worry about while you're putting these together. 
Although many others do use explosive bolts because they're a more simple technology in a lot of ways. They're more reliable rather than some kind of a mechanical pusher type of thing. So you have all these satellites, and let's say you have a dozen satellites or something like that that you're trying to get off that are all of the same design. How do you launch those off in such a way that they're not going to hit each other? Well, the spacecraft is going around at orbital velocity, which is about 7.4 kilometers per second, roughly, about 5 miles a second, give or take. And remember that the speed is about a meter per second, so that's not going to change the orbit significantly. So there's a lot of different things they can do. When you're deploying the satellites, one of the big things that you're trying to avoid is a recontact where the two of the satellites will ram into each other within short order. That's something you really, really don't want. That's really embarrassing and it could potentially damage the satellites, especially once they have their solar arrays deployed. Before then, they're relatively inert. And Starlink usually will deploy really in a rapid manner, but they'll you know spread out far enough that they're not going to recontact. And they'll propagate out their paths based off of their delta V and some uncertainty to make sure that none of them are going to impact each other within some period of time. Now, if you have a bunch of satellites, you may try to deploy these in pairs where you have one satellite on each end of the, the spacecraft, the rocket, that will fire off at the same time to try to keep the center of mass and center of thrust at about the same point. So that way you're not going to have a crazy change in rocket and have to maintain the stability of the platform. So you get the rocket into its deploying attitude and it will try to remain very, very still. And then you'll fire off these spacecraft usually in opposite directions, but not always if you, sometimes you just can't avoid it. So you're sending this along and you'll tend to fire the earlier ones with a little bit more umph, so that way they can separate further from the spacecraft. Because if you fired the later ones with more umph, well, then you have to worry about them ramming into each other. If you have a whole bunch of them, you may deploy some along your direction of motion and then some, you know, rotate the rocket 30 degrees and then deploy again and rotate it 30 degrees and deploy again. So that way they're going in slightly different directions and then the only point that they could possibly recontact would be in one complete orbit from where you're at. And, you know, that's fairly minimal, pretty low risk that you have something that precise, but they still study that out to make sure that's going to be the case. And so they'll run all these simulations to figure out how all of this goes and make sure that they're not going to contact with each other and because that's really embarrassing and nobody likes it when that kind of stuff happens. So Starlink, when it is deployed from Starship, well, they released an animation and this animation obviously is sped up because, you know, these satellites would be zooming out there, but it'd be really boring to see a real time deployment animation. and. You know, they take liberties with that kind of stuff. The satellites all come out of one door that happens within Starship. Now, Starship, the vehicle weighs a considerable amount, so you're not going to have to worry too much about it. But every time one of these comes out, then you're going to knock off your stability just a little tiny, tiny bit because you're pushing from one direction and for every motion, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so you're going to have to counter that. So they'll probably have to fire some thrusters to help keep it stabilized or something along those lines. But knowing SpaceX, they may actually deliberately do that. And each successive satellite push will rotate the rocket a little bit to a different orientation so they can fire off the next batch in the next batch and not have them all point in the same direction. And then they're effectively only have to stop. They don't have to start. In fact, that sounds like exactly the kind of thing that SpaceX would do, and I would not be surprised if they do that. We'll find out. When they deployed the Starlink satellites for the first time with their crazy rotate end over end and release all at once, we all kind of thought that was crazy. They didn't announce it ahead of time. We just saw the video and was like, what was that? But it works, obviously. We have thousands of Starlink satellites that are out there and they're providing internet all throughout the world. So. It's a pretty cool concept. 
Anywho, that's just the, the real basics of how spacecraft are launched from a rocket once they get into orbit. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Thank you for everything you do. I appreciate your support, your likes, comments, questions, your support. It all means a lot to me. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.